Sanjoy to, to uh, chair this discussion and uh, I'll provide the drama later. But Sanjoy, as everybody knows, is nefarious, multifarious, multipurpose, and omnipresent. He's been a filmmaker, a TV chef, a producer, a have, no? director of you plays, have. of musicals, of um, my book is, literary my book festivals my book. now. But now he's too busy doing something else. But I'll hand it over to him. Enjoy, sit back, relax, and see you soon again. Dr. Pratt. Thanks. Can you, hear, can you hear me? Yes. Thanks, Suresh. Uh, the reason why we actually decided to do it at Charbagh is because Suresh is such a great comic. And for the last three years, I've been trying to get him to do a standalone comic routine that we can tour festivals and he can keep everybody entertained, but he's refusing to do it, bad boy. Uh, Mahesh Dutani, many of you may have seen his plays, some of you may have seen his film. Uh, playwright, uh, director, filmmaker, um, he's written a plays for the radio as well, and we're absolutely delighted that Mahesh is uh, here with us uh, today. Uh, Manu Dash has, uh, has translated uh, Dance Like a Man into Uriya, which we will release, but before that, this is Mahesh's new work and I'm going to ask Mahesh, Mahesh is going to release it first, so yes, you have to. So this has got an essay uh, by Mahesh, it's got four words by uh, Lilet Dubey and uh, uh, Achin Kaur. A A Kaur and it's got two plays as well, uh, Big Fat City and uh, Parda. Where did I leave? Where my did partner? I leave my Parda, which we'll talk about, and we want to do the release of uh, the Uriya version of the book, which is well. Which we have to fight with. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, wow. Wow. And can I ask uh, us to begin with the video of uh, Dance Like a Man? It's a new, um, it's the filming of the play uh, that's been put together by Subodh and Nandita Das as an effort by them to record some of the uh, most celebrated plays here in India. I think they've already done six and these will be released over a period of time. They've been shot in a, in a cinematographic way rather than just as a play and uh, we're going to share a two-minute clip with you for that. You like this? Very good. Yeah. Wow. Look at all this. I've, I've never seen a room like this before. You know, Vishwas, these instruments, they are the same ones my parents used. Almost 40 years old. Yes, yes, we know writing English. We graduate in English, honors. Kindly give me a name, please. <laughs> I'm very anxious to know who the lovely, lovely Lata is marrying. So, Amma, what do you think of him? We aren't thinking of him. Our daughter's going to give a performance that will make her career, and she won't have a Mrithangam playing. Of course, she's talented, and she can become famous. And that will make all that we have been through worth something? Yes. Hey, what did you think of Vishwas? Huh? Who? If people like you praise her, she has every reason to be happy. I'm going to paste these reviews in our album. Our album? Yes. You're going to paste her reviews in our album? Why not? There's plenty of space. But she deserves an album of her own, don't you think? We don't have another album in the house. Well, then it's about time we got one. Happiness lies? No. Are in being a man. Where this dance is going to take you? You help me. And I will always see that you dance. I know that it will be difficult. I know it will take time. But it must be done.
beautiful, beautifully filmed. Yeah, uh, Mah right. Mahesh, were you were you happy with this uh, with the world, way this particular work has come out? Oh, absolutely. Actually, uh, I wasn't there for the shooting, but when I saw the promo, I haven't seen the uh, the the film. Uh, I I called Subodha instantly and I said that this is something very unique that he has done uh, is to capture the, the play uh, on uh, film and yet not compromise on the theatricality or the cinematic values and I think he rightly calls it cine play. That's yeah. fabulous. Mahesh, I mean for many of you who don't know till the early 80s much of English theatre in this country was either rip-offs of off-Broadway or off-Western uh, productions which were staged by very fancy theatre groups like ourselves uh, in many venues uh, across the country. Uh, and then Mahesh uh, appeared on the firmament really like a, um, a, a sort of saviour to it. And what made you actually attempt doing your first play, Mahesh? What, what was the thought process? What happened? You mean writing? Yes. <coughs> well, uh, I started off as a director and uh, I was very much in the same uh, boat. Uh, my initial plays were uh, Sartre's Weeklo and, uh, you know, Euripides, uh, Hippolytus, and uh, done very badly again, I must admit. And so uh, at some point I felt that, you know, I have to do theater which, uh, which speaks to me and uh, a theater which audience, my audience can relate to. And that's why, uh, quite by accident, I uh, decided why not try my hand at writing. And now, of course, I'm more known as a writer than as a director. Uh, you know, you talk about, especially in this essay, you talk about finding your voice and, and how for a while you struggled with that experience. And you go back and you talk about uh, your father and, and his experience of, of taking you to theater. Do you want to share some of your childhood Okay, uh, well, the one that I've mentioned in my essay, uh, my father was actually quite a, a theatre buff in the sense that uh, uh, he used to, uh, his business took him to Bombay quite often, it was called Bombay then, uh, and uh, one of the things... This was from Bangalore? From Bangalore, from yes. And uh, he would go to Bhangwadi, uh, which is uh, uh, which was the Gujarati theatre district. Bhangwadi, of course, is the Opium Bazaar. It's quite ironic that you know it was also the area where theatre was done, Gujarati theatre. And he would talk about the musical dramas he would see, and uh, that somehow maybe must have influenced me because uh, when I saw my first play, it was not an English play; it was a Gujarati play. Uh, I was completely enamored. The usual sort of romantic falling in love with theater, the dark space, the, uh, you know, the surreal lighting and the makeup and everything. So that, I guess, was uh, where it all began. But of course, that, that was like a childhood crush. It stayed on, but I didn't really act upon it because I think as a, as a school kid and even in college, I was... Um, I was rather shy and uh, didn't think of uh, that I could fit into theatre. Uh, somehow I felt it was out of my league. Uh, so it was much later that I uh, joined a couple of workshops uh, with the Bangalore Little Theatre, which gave me a lot more confidence. Uh, and, and where did you find your voice? I mean, you talk about finding your voice, finding your language. <coughs> Well, yeah, that's an interesting journey. In a way, I, I'm grateful that I didn't have a language because being Gujaratis, uh, living in Bangalore, uh, you know, my parents were anxious that my sisters and I studied in an English uh, uh, school, school uh, an English medium school, where uh, English was the language we all operated in. And at the same time, uh, my parents spoke Gujarati at home and uh, Kannada was the language of Bangalore. So somehow you grew up with no real ownership of any language. And uh, when I started doing theater, English was the only language I could think because by then I was sufficiently cultivated in, uh, into thinking in English because of the schooling I had and the fact that we weren't in Gujarat. So Gujarati then became a language of my parents and hence anything related to parents is really from the past and uh, one had the assumption that if you, if you want to be in the present, 
than it is about English. Uh, but later on, of course, I realized that, uh, you know, that came with its own uh, set of problems. Uh, and um, it was very soon I realized I, I didn't have a language. And the only language I knew, uh, which I learned, of course, was the language of theater. As one reads uh, more and more, I mean, a lot of the regional languages today are so rich in content and it's so wonderful to be actually able to explore them as translations are happening, not just from a language into English, but actually a language to another language. So you have Marathi being translated into Bengali, etc. And Manu, I'm very uh, fascinated that you decided to choose this, uh, to do this in, in Odia. If you tell us why you decided that and what were the challenges because here you've transplanted a very strong classical tradition for those of you who don't know dance like a man actually looks at uh, at, at a bharat natyam dancer and you know i'm going to ask uh, mahesh about that a little later but translating that into an odia tradition where again odissi is such a strong language yes, yes. how did you do that uh, uh, thank you uh, sanjay in fact uh, i'm from a, a place uh, which is uh, known for its uh, uh, not only for uh, super cyclones or piling, it is also known for its uh, Odyssey dance. Uh, the, and uh, when we talk about Odyssey dance, which is really is the, a real carry one identity for uh, any Odia, uh, uh, the father, the, the doyen of Odia, uh, the, the dance, Odyssey dance is uh, Kelu Mahapatra, who himself is a male. So I thought that uh, in the beginning it is just, uh, I was intrigued that uh, how a dance like a man, is it about uh, Mr. Kelu Mahapatra? Then I read, but uh, okay, it was not about him. Um, uh, but uh, when the dance is always uh, uh, connected with a uh, woman, so um, uh, when I read and I was really so fascinated, then I started uh, reading many of the plays of Mahesh, and uh, Mayus is no doubt is one of the best uh, playwrights in English as in now in India and uh, uh, he is still active uh, and uh, giving us uh, uh, more and more uh, uh, wonderful plays and uh, when I read and I started loving and uh, while translating the very basic question lies that uh, you have to first love the writer which I started getting it day by day and I'm loving and I'm, I'm still in love, yeah, like uh, Mahesh. And uh, um, uh, there are so many uh, plays I have thought of uh, translating uh, Mahesh uh, into Oriya. And uh, yesterday when in a bookmark also we told that we have 22 languages uh, uh, in India. And uh, how many uh, books, uh, this is, uh, books, those are the challenging books, are translated to the almost in all uh, uh, Indian languages. So what you just now told. Uh, so this is the way I just... Uh, so just to hear the language, do you want to read a okay. paragraph from... Okay, thank you. Uh, it is almost the last uh, stanza. Uh, it is Jairaj. Sabu kathavartha hai gala, ame arama se padeva. Ghara bhangi wala bhi loke pahunchi sarithi ve sette balo ko. Prathame samna tagu bhangi ve. Nua arsa ko talo ko patae wala bhi subhi dhaaba. एटा टे कष्ट हो पाए पुणा दिन मानक खूब निदा घर या बड़ निदा लोक गुड़ाक भी हेले मो बापा भाई निदा लोक भी टली पड़े ना आम आम फ्लाट को चली आस बहुत सुंदर हो फ्लाट आम बाल्कोन कृष्ण चूड़ा गचर मथान भी नजर आसे ना मत कहला जेने काटा योजना कर सेटा कड़े रास्त जावास बोले खूब असुविधा कर मात्र यही कोठार दल अवसरप्राप्त बुढ़ा लोक ही बचेदे मुझुची भी तक भितर जड़े मु भावुची मु भी तक भितर जड़े मु तुमको कही कि जिते बड़े तुम्हें चंद्रकला पाखक बुली जा लता मो सह कथा होता बोली तुम्हें दुहे घनिष्ठ बहुत घनिष्ठ बंधु बोली मुझे जाणी से बहुत खुशी होता तुम दुहीं भितर के सामंजस्य रही कथा मु लता को कहती एपरिक दुहकर अच्छी गंठी बात लता कही आज ता पु प्रथम शब्द कहला से शब्द टा जिलापी भाई शुणा जा थैंक यू मुझे लैंग्वेज आई मीन 
A good play, you need to transcend language. <coughs> you need to see the visual, you need to be captivated because that's what the theater is. It's, mm -hmm. it's very different in a sense from, yeah. from either television or the written word. In, your, in the first uh, version of Dance Like a Man, I think which Alec uh, uh, staged. Uh, uh, no, the first version was staged by me. By me, and yeah. then it was taken over by Lillette in yes, a sense and absolutely. created that's a whole different visual image. What was the difference? And, and how did it sort of evolve, or did it evolve, or did mm -hmm. you need to do some rewriting? Absolutely. And your distance as a director, did that make a, a difference when Lillette took over your work? Mm -hmm. Well, I think Lillette's is by far the definitive version of, uh, of my play, Dance Like a Man. I can't, it, it sort of set a benchmark. It's been uh, playing for 15 years now, and they've crossed 500 uh, performances. Uh, looking back on it, I think uh, what Lillette did with it, uh, you see, when I wrote the play, it was also my experience with Bharat Natyam. I would studied the dance for six years, and it was, in a sense, uh, a kind of, um, uh, 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 the inspiration was very homegrown. Um, so uh, what Lillette did with it was she sort of took the universality of it and focused on the man-woman relationships and the, um, the artificial constructs of gender, which, which uh, uh, the play, it's inherent in the play. Uh, so giving it that universal focus, I think uh, it sort of makes the play more accessible. Uh, I remember when Lillette uh, chose Dance Like a Man, I was very keen pitching another play to her and said, no, no, you need to do this, because if you're doing this in the North, you know, it's about Bharatanatyam dancers, and people may not be able to relate to that in the North. But she, she had a gut feel about this play and said, no, I think this would work, and she was absolutely right. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the play, it still continues to be performed more or less across the country, and it went to the Edinburgh Festival as well, it's performed in America, and perhaps you all can catch it later. Uh, moving on, um, Mahesh, uh, one of your most con controversial uh, productions was actually a hot muggy night. Uh, on a muggy night, on a in, muggy Mumbai. night, night <laughs> in Mumbai. Um, you talked about same-sex relationships at that point of time, and I think it was the first time that something like that was done by an Indian playwright and brought out onto stage. And uh, it attracted, obviously, a lot of controversy. Uh, some people love to hate it because it was very much in your face. Mm -hmm. Again, what was the process behind that and, and how did that evolve? You see, uh, before On a Muggy Night in Mumbai, I had written Final Solutions that Alec Padamsi had directed. And uh, he, uh, he is my mentor. And I learned a great deal from him, collaborating with him on the production. And uh, I think he gave me the confidence uh, to, uh, to see myself as a serious playwright. I think uh, one of the things, he always used to quote from Hamlet, he said, to thine own self be true. And um, I felt, yes, I have, I have the confidence and I have the ability to do something very cutting edge. Now, mind you, this is the early 90s, right? So talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, a theme of gay love, uh, today, uh, you know, may not seem like a big thing, but in the early 90s... Well, as of last month, it's, it's a big thing again. So well, yeah. maybe it's a big thing again. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll get arrested after this, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another seminar altogether, I think. Well, uh, so that's how On a Muggy Night in Mumbai came about, because by then I was uh, uh, traveling to Mumbai, and I was... Um, uh, 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 you, you know, I was very fascinated by the gay subculture which was growing in Mumbai. And I just felt that this is an area which I, I, I but, really... But wasn't wanted. there such a subculture in Bangalore as well? Not yeah. at that time, no. Of course, now Bangalore has, in some ways, is... Uh, is the pink city. Is, is the pink city, the real pink city. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's very politically aware and active. It wasn't so. Uh, in the early 90s, somehow one looked to Bombay as uh, the uh, uh, as the the Bohemian culture, where you know uh, anything goes, kind of to to uh, quote a song. So um, that that sort of uh, drew my attraction. And yes, there was a kind of uh, romantic appeal, uh, you know, to get under the skin of this. Uh, 
uh, a very lively subculture. I, I mean, one of the things <coughs> that you actually did was you were able to to uh, delineate or paint the subculture uh, without actually, you know, without um, in any way um, holding back mm -hmm. the politics of that. I mean, now looking, this is 2014. And if you were to do the play again, if it was to, to be produced again, hmm. uh, has the context changed? Hmm. Good question. Uh, because I think some of it is uh, a little overwritten, if you ask me. Because uh, at that point, anyone uh, who was out had to be political. Uh, the, you couldn't be out and not be political. You so, it both radical and political. Radical and political. Yeah. Well, being radical uh, would be uh, political in that sense. Uh, so, looking back on it, I think it's a little overwritten, but I think uh, there's the double edge, is that I don't see it as didactic. I do see them as the politics of my character, but there is a danger of them being seen more as uh, flag holding, that uh, the, some lines which seem to speak directly about the politics of, uh, of being gay, uh, the politics of being lesbian. So if, if it were to be produced again, I think I would seriously look at the script and see where I could leave a lot uh, as subtext. Uh, it does read a little as if it's a little overwritten. Manu, would something like this, um, uh, I don't know whether you read uh, this particular play, but would something like this be translatable into, say, Odia? I mean, is that a... Uh, Maginite. Uh, Maginite. Uh, in Mumbai. Yes, it can be. The, you see, uh, uh, Mahesh uh, uses the idioms. And uh, uh, when we're reading, I never feel that I am reading uh, uh, an English play. Uh, the, that That's is the, the best compliment yes, I can ever have seen. Uh, the, <laughs> The way he uses the languages, it is as if we are talking in day-to-day -day languages. And uh, um, uh, under the uh, situations and uh, whatever the events happens, it is all uh, we have seen. The only thing that he sees it in a different way, the way he sees is altogether different way in a drama, as a playwright, but uh, we uh, always feel at home when, while reading. Uh, his place. So did, did that then make you turn to cinema or at what point of time did you then decide to write for mm -hmm. cinema and then produce mm -hmm. uh, your film? Well, uh, that came about a little later, uh, close towards 2000, when a friend of mine, uh, a film buff and industrialist, uh, decided uh, just uh, for a lark to produce a film. And so a lovely yes. thing to do for a lark producer film. Yeah. <laughs> well right. recommended to every industrialist yes. sitting in this audience. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and for a lark, please produce plays as well. Yeah. Uh, and he uh, said, let's look at one of your plays. And uh, actually, uh, I was, because I had this baggage about On a Muggy Night in Mumbai and the criticism it had received, looking back on it, some of it was very valid. I said, let's choose On a Muggy Night in Mumbai. And of course, I changed it to Mango Souffle. Uh, that there's, I won't get into that story, why? Uh, but from Mumbai, it was transposed to uh, a farmhouse in Bangalore. Uh, because again, I didn't have the equivalent of uh, 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 you, you, you know the sort of uh, Malabar Hill uh, of Mumbai uh, in Bangalore, and so I thought, let me seclude the action and keep it away from the city. Um, so uh, that uh, that was my foray into filmmaking. I wrote and directed it. Uh, big mistake again because I, I feel watching the film again, I feel that you know it just reeks of its theatrical origin. Uh, whereas I think if I had collaborated with a screenwriter then, uh, it would have been a beautiful screenplay. Of course, I've learned now, uh, but at the cost of one film. I remember I was talking to uh, Vikas Swaroop uh, um, uh, some time ago and asking him, what is the process when you hand over the work that you love to a film director and say, you know, you can do whatever with it. In some cases, you can completely ruin it and in some cases it becomes mm -hmm. better and brighter. Is that one of the reasons that you wanted to hold on to it and do it yourselves? And 
Yeah, probably because I didn't know any better. Now, if, if I want to write a screenplay, uh, one has to come to terms with the fact that you, you, are, you have the first word, you don't have the last word. And actually a film is made in processes. So you start it, but at, it's a director's medium. Uh, the director gets a sense of ownership. That, and it's a good thing if the director feels this is his script uh, or her script. I think that's very important for a film director to feel, and it's very important for the screenwriter then to let go. Uh, the only choice as a screenplay writer you have is, do you trust the director and the producer or you don't? And the choice you have is, do you want to go with it or you don't want to go with it? If you want to go with it, then you've got to let go. It's like you know, handing over your baby and saying, okay, you take care of it and I'm going on a vacation. Mahesh, uh, Dance Like a Man, for example, to some extent came from your own experiences of learning to dance and how that opened you up. Where did your, uh, where did uh, uh, my favorite play of yours, which is uh, Bravely Fought the Queen, where did the inspiration come for Bravely Fought the Queen? Well, uh, it was a conversation. Um, this was in Ahmedabad. Uh, I was a house guest. And uh, there was just this uh, communication error. The women, we were all dressed to go out. And then, um, you know, uh, the, the people I was staying with, her husband called to say it's called off. And it seems that it was called off a week ago. So here were these lovely women all dressed and literally nowhere to go. And I thought that was a fabulous metaphor of uh, confinement, cultural confinement, and I sort of explored that metaphor further by using the bonsai uh, as, uh, you know, one of the women has this preoccupation with cultivating bonsais, which then becomes a reflection of their own lives. Moving on to the final solution, um, that again was, came at an incredibly important moment. Uh, the riots in Gujarat just concluded um, you got down to writing and, and the play was produced uh, again extremely successfully and of course you got a lot of, uh, a lot of criticism by various people about it. Where did that again come from? Uh, the inspiration came from Alec, the director, because uh, he approached me and said, look, this was much before the Babri Masjid. He, he said that, look, this whole VHP thing is happening. They're, they're moving this issue in the parliament, uh, the Ram Janmabhoomi issue, and that, uh, you know, he foresaw it and, you know, he was wise enough to see it coming. And he said, would you be interested? I can commission you to write a play about that. And my initial response was that I really don't know. Having grown up in the South, we're very, very sort of protected uh, from, uh, uh, you know, a lot of things. We were protected from partition. My <laughs> parents didn't have the journey of partition, uh, uh, you know. So it, it was a little out of my experience. Uh, but he was very, very confident of my uh, uh, abilities to structure a, a powerful play and he commissioned me and said you take your time in researching it he helped me with the research he put me on to a lot of people I interviewed a lot of people it took me a year and a half to write it uh, but I have to give him credit for moving me on because otherwise I really wouldn't have written that play and today I'm very very proud of that play because I feel that's when I really stepped out of myself and wrote something which has meaning to me first do you see yourself as a political writer or commentator or playwright? I, I see myself as a political as a person and I guess who you are as a person is bound to come in your writing. Uh, but uh, again, uh, you know, there is the, the, the danger and of course, you know, I'm, I'm uh, sort of uh, uh, also uh, sort of, uh, vulnerable to falling into that trap is that you don't put messages out there like uh, I think it was Johnny who said I'm not a postman uh, you know I don't deliver messages and I, I think your first service is to drama that uh, it has to move and engage your audience through relationships through conflict through transformations of characters happening on stage uh, that's the language you're speaking in and it's it's not a soapbox uh, for messages to both of you, you know, a lot of people say that 
English writing today is still is sort of very polite uh, set pieces set in drawing rooms across India, especially those written by Indian playwrights, as opposed to plays written in regional languages, which we look at as rich in tradition, rich in flavor. Do you both have a comment on, on, on this? Well, but, uh, in the regional languages, uh, there are some good plays in Odia also, but uh, there are also bad uh, plays uh, written in uh, every uh, regional languages. You see, language is something different, and the structure and the, tech, uh, the technology are the, um, uh, the other things uh, is important. Uh, the language is no doubt uh, English now is not a foreign language in India as such. It is um, uh, spoken by and uh, heard by many people, and uh, the, uh, we are always talking now that 65 percent of uh, our um, uh, youth are now available in India, in the total in a billion plus uh, um, uh, country, uh, and uh, most of them are uh, well uh, acquainted with uh, um, uh, uh, English. Even if uh, our children also are not uh, nowadays uh, talking in our own uh, um, uh, regional languages. Do you do you see the the difference, uh, Mahesh? Do you I agree uh, I would like to say that some of our finest plays have been written outside the drawing room. Uh, if you look at Girish Karnad's best works, whether it's Nagamanla, whether it's Tughlaq, whether it's uh, Tali Danda, they're all visually spectacular and they're not limited to uh, drawing room conversations. Uh, you, you know, if you look at Badal Sarkar's plays, I mean, he just destroyed the proscenium completely and took the theater to the parks. And uh, other playwrights as well, uh, Chandrasekhar Kambar in the South, uh, you know, uh, Tendulkar, Ghashiram Kotwal, and, uh, you know, others. So I think this is predominantly an English theater preoccupation with the drawing room. And I think it was uh, uh, Girish Karnad or uh, another Kannada playwright who said that why are we so caught up with the drawing room that uh, you know things happen in public spaces in India, that uh, we have street cultures and there's so much of uh, you, know, you know, personal, interpersonal relationships out there in the open. It's not uh, a, a part of kind of uh, uh, setting, that's not the environment. So in a sense, I think uh, there, uh, I would uh, disagree and say that there are brilliant plays written uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, Canada, in uh, Marathi, in Bengali, and I'm sure in Oriya, I'm just ignorant about those plays in uh, Oriya, which, uh, which go beyond, or not go beyond, let's say the focus is in um, uh, creating other spaces. You know, every year, Mahesh, when we come around to our, uh, our theatre festival, Meta, uh, and our awards, uh, I always have press asking me, so is theatre dead? Is, you know, is there, a, is there going to be a revival? Isn't there a problem, etc.? And the more and more one looks around, you actually see theatre alive and kicking. Absolutely. More and more yeah. shows are being yeah, done yeah. by more and more theatre groups, and there's more and more excellent playwrights yeah. coming out, uh, you know, not just in, in metros, but literally across mm -hmm. the firmament. What's your sort of... Uh, yeah, I know. I think this is... Uh, is the theatre really dead? Uh, that's also from a song from the 60s, I think. And uh, that sort of says it all, that that seems to... Uh, that's a drawing room conversation for you, is to talk about, uh, you know, the art of theatre is dying and how the cinema has taken over our lives and how we're controlled by images and things. Yes, the visual image is very exciting, and I think cinema is a brilliant uh, 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 medium of uh, uh, artistic expression. But the theater has its place. And I don't think anywhere in the world theater competes with cinema. It's, it's, uh, it, they're completely different mediums. And you go to the cinema for a reason, and you go to the theater for another reason. And uh, yes, one has to say that all audiences today that go to the theater also go to the cinema. But the reverse is not true. Not all the audiences that go to the cinema go to the theater. So in that sense, the theater is likely to be influenced by cinema. Uh, you would have uh, maybe quicker sort of uh, 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 scene changes that you don't, the traditional concept of the unity of time and uh, space and action uh, can uh, very easily be challenged now. And I think uh, theater has a lot to benefit if it looks at the language of cinema and the language of cuts 
and uh, the language of, uh, but you know, theater also has its own inherent cinematic, if you look at soliloquies, if you look at Shakespeare's monologues, those are really close ups, aren't they? Uh, that you're going inside the mind of, of uh, your characters. Is, 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 as a playwright, is the theater a sustainable economic proposition? As a playwright, no. As a director in Bombay, maybe. Depends on the kind of plays you do, right? But you, you do make a living doing workshops uh, by, uh, you know, uh, teaching and doing things that are allied uh, around theater. But as a playwright, definitely no. And royalties from? Royalties from books, I mean, come on, uh, you, you know. Uh, uh, you know, my publishers there, uh, Penguin, they're one of the biggest publishers in, in the world. Uh, but uh, uh, selling a play script is a huge challenge uh, because it's not that people wander into a bookstore and say, okay, let me pick up a collection of plays. Uh, it's a very, very specific readership. Uh, uh, you know, universities, production houses, students who are studying the plays. I mean, th those, those are the But Mahesh, isn't it also, a, 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 this thing of marketing the plays? I mean, for example, when Dance Like a Man is, uh, is performed, for, you know, it's very rare you see the book available for sale mm -hmm. in the foyer of the theater. I mean, there's normally very little merchandising I that know. we I in India uh, yeah. sort of tend to do. So by saying that, yes, there's a book in a bookshop yeah. is not good enough it's anymore. It's not good enough. You know, it's like a concert. You go to a concert, yeah. you can buy a CD if you like. If you like I, I agree with you absolutely over there. I mean, uh, you go to, you know, the Kabuki Za in Tokyo, or you go to Broadway or the West End, you see a musical and the CD is available, the, you know, the libretto is available. I think we need to get a bit more savvy as far as marketing is concerned. That's where geniuses like you come in. <laughs> so let me, get you, let me get you to read a little bit from uh, your new work. Okay. And, uh, where did I leave my Parda, which I finished reading uh, yesterday and just completely enjoyed it. And if you can read a passage sure. from that, then we'll open it up to the audience. <coughs> okay, I've got to read a scene. Uh, Maybe you can set it for everybody. Yeah, in I will. It's, uh, it's Nazia, who is this 80-year-old, uh, 82, uh, stage diva and she's led a life of uh, you know passion and fulfillment and uh, she's a star now Lilette Dubay whom you saw in the clip uh, she plays the part and she's absolutely amazing so uh, you know I, I just adore her acting and I really don't think I could come anywhere close to her but I'll try so uh, in this scene uh, she is reviving a modern version of Shakuntala, a Bigyan Shakuntala, which she's called Shaku. And uh, she is desperately trying to get a sponsor involved. At the same time, she is required for a shoot in Vaishno Devi, which she has uh, decided not to go to because she's tired of playing these grandmother roles and has had a fight with the producer. So the producer has sent his assistant director to fetch her for the shoot. So the scene opens with her on the phone, desperately trying to get some sponsorship uh, for her play. So we're in the present now, back in the warehouse. The older Nazia is alone and on her cell phone. On the phone. Hi, Dilip. How are you, my dear? All well with a new marriage? Good. I'm glad it's working out, finally. If it doesn't, I could set you up with this really handsome assistant director. <laughs> Listen, did you go through my proposal? You know, the Times is planning to make this a cover story. My revival of the modern Indian theater. Shaku is going to be all over town, along with the PK Wineries logo. Why don't you give, give away a free bottle of your lovely Shiraz to everyone there on premiere night? Ah, oh, you did? What did he say? He doesn't want a modern version? You mean, you won't sponsor it? No, I don't want to do the original. He could take it or leave it. Okay? And tell him his shiraz tastes like a mix of vinegar and carpets anyway. <laughs> she hangs up muttering to herself. She doesn't notice that Vinay has come in and is waiting patiently for her to notice him. 
nausea on the phone. Dipti, Dipti darling, uh, these are desperate times. You don't happen to have a sponsor as a client, do you? I, I thought as much. Well, tell that movie producer I will do that grandmother role for a crow. I know, I know, nobody pays a crow for a grandmother. It was worth trying. <laughs> Maybe I should get Deepika to play Shakuntala. That will bring in all the sponsors. Darling, uh, get me Deepika's number. Oh, shoot. I was supposed to be shooting with her and Vinay's phone rings. Nazia notices him. And Vinay mumbling into the phone. I've reached, we'll call you back. Nazia, you! Dipti, darling, I'll call you back, but do think of something. Vinay, ma'am, I'm not leaving unless I take you back to the shoot. I have orders to bring you to Vaishno Devi right away. It's the climax scene. Nazia, what do I have to do? Ring bells? <laughs> yes. You're praying for your grandson's recovery. Sanjay, sir, is calling you right now, and you better take his call. You might as well deal with this issue now. I'm not leaving unless you go with me. Nazia, then don't leave. <laughs> Vinay, I'm warning you, I won't. Please, ma'am, they'll fire me if I don't bring you. Nazia, and it's been your dream to be an assistant director. Or are you madly in love with the Sanjay? Vinay, I'm not gay. Nazia, you don't know it, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Vinay, look, uh, I have a girlfriend and she will tell you that you're wrong. I mean, whatever gave you that idea. Uh, do I look gay? Nazia. So your dream is to assist Sanjay. Uh, is that what you're saying? Nobody dreams to be an assistant for anything. I I'm an actor. FTII 2006. Nazia. And you're hoping Sanjay will take you in his next film. You think one day Rithik is going to be late for a shoot and is fired and Sanjay turns to you and says, assistant, you play the part. <laughs> That's your fantasy, isn't it? Ha, fat chance. Not possible in films, but in the theater? In the theater, you could dream for anything to happen. Stick around. What's your name? Vinay. Dash. You'll make the perfect dash. Vinay, dash. Dushyant of old. <laughs> I, I thought of dush, but uh, dash is more dash. <laughs> Vinay, a little wary now. Uh, what do I have to do to get the part? Nazia, just be yourself. You're perfect for the part. And then you'll go to Vaishno Devi. Nazia, to ring bells and pray for my grandson. I know, I know. I'll, I'll deal with that too. Vinay, you, you have to deal with it right now. Why don't you finish one thing before starting another? Nazia's phone, which was left on a table, starts to ring. The ringtone of the phone is an electronic disembodied voice saying, unknown calling, unknown calling. That's Sanjay, sir. Nazia waving on the phone. Continue. You see, Dash doesn't quite know Shaku. I suggest you answer it first, that you could tell me about Dash. Don't you want to know about your role, ma'am? What kind of an actor are you? <laughs> Please answer that. To me, the role is everything worth dying for. Please, ma'am, worth living for. It is important that you answer your phone and speak to Sanjay, sir. He can wait! I can't! I want to get out with Shaku! Vinay goes to the phone and answers it. Hello, sir. She's here. I'm, I'm realizing it's not Sanjay. Oh, I, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, yes, she is. Just a moment. Um, it's for you. Uh, no, it's not Sanjay, sir. Who is it? On the phone. Uh, may I know who's speaking? To Nazia. It's a gentleman called Sohail. Beat. I don't know any Sohail. After a while, Vinay speaks to the caller. She says, You heard. Okay. 
uh, look, uh, she's busy now, and he says he's Suhail, your husband. <laughs> Nazia shouting for the benefit of the caller, I don't know any husband. <laughs> he heard that, so why don't you just hang up? When I go into Nazia, taking charge, whatever it is, finish it. Then we go to Vaishno Devi, and after the shooting is done, we come back and do your play, okay? Pause. The sound of a train rumbling through a tunnel, Nazia. You think it is so simple? Things don't get finished. They just hide in a dark corner like a ghoul and grab at you when you're not looking. And sometimes you have to beat the shit out of that groove to make it crawl back into its dark corner. I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you. Mahesh Tatani, incredible playwright. <laughs> so we do some questions from the audiences? So, uh, uh, so but before audiences. then, I have to pitch this, and you have to see Lilette play this part. She's absolutely divine. You'll fall in love with her. Yes. <laughs> Question, so one here, one in the red, and the gentleman in the jacket. Let's do them in clusters, so that we'll okay. get a few more questions. Hello. Hello, sir. Sir, it's uh, more of a request. Uh, why don't you organize theater workshops uh, in Jaipur? I have seen all over your Facebook page that they have been organized in Mumbai and Delhi and Bangalore, where you stay, if I'm not wrong. So please, uh, what would you say on that? Yeah, I, I would do workshops wherever people pay. Show me, show them the money. Show me the money and I'll oh, do it. There's a, a lot of it. It's a humble request and... Uh, don't make it humble. Yeah, it's it's just, yeah. <laughs> With a check. Check. Yeah. With a check. Okay, we'll check our dates. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. The lady in the, in the... Hi, I know the USP of theatre that is that it's a live performance, you know, vis-a-vis -a, -vis a movie. But why don't you put theatre online? For, I mean, why don't you put theatre online? Ah. Why can't I just stream it? Okay. You know, hold, hold for performances that. which I can't catch. Yeah. Hold that for a second and we we'll take one more. Yeah, it's on. Okay. Uh, uh, what is it with uh, regional languages and uh, plays in regional languages and its audiences? For example, the moment a regional language play is out of its com comfort zone, it loses its audience. Uh, like for example, we do plays in Pune, which is, of course, uh, these are plays which we do in Marathi. The moment we put up a show at Bharangam, or we have a show at Meta now, yeah. it loses its audiences. Whereas, plays like Gashiram Kotwal, or let's say, uh, Shantada Kot Saluahe, or um, Mahesh El Kunchwar's Virasat, these plays are uh, immune to uh, these these oh, barriers. Oh, they transcend barriers. Yes. They transcend. Yeah. So two questions. One yeah. is Why about the internet and one online. is about language. Yeah. Well, uh, my posture was always that putting them online defeats the purpose of the, the theater. The idea is to get people to come uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, the theater and uh, get the live experience. That has always been my posture, which that's why I called a little old fashioned. But that's where Subodh uh, and uh, Nandita Das come in. Uh, Subodh has started something called Cineplay. Uh, so, what he is doing is he is capturing famous plays on film but at the same time not uh, adapting them for cinema, but keeping their theatricality and trying to capture the theatrical energy cinematically. Yes, that's, that's a challenge, but I think he is really focused on doing that. So you will be able to download these plays and view them on your computer or on your television screen. Absolutely, yeah, so that's happening. And to answer your question, uh, you see, uh, this, uh, the plays that you mentioned, like Ghasiran Kotwal or, or Virasat or, uh, you know, the, the uh, other plays that you mentioned, they are famous plays, right? People, audiences who, who come to them, uh, I would say most of them know the play, right? Or they know the playwright or they've read the play. And so they wouldn't mind coming to see the play in a language that they don't quite understand. Uh, just for the experience of seeing a new production, a new interpretation. So in that sense, it transcends the language because the, the play 
has achieved this kind of, uh, kind of iconic status, uh, which makes it more accessible. Yes. Yeah, that's because it's Girish Kannan. Like, I wanted to see it. I don't understand Marathi. I was in uh, uh, Delhi for a day promoting my book. And I said, oh, what a shame I can't see the play. I don't understand Marathi. I just said, I want to see Girish Kannad's new play. I didn't even know the title, but I was very keen to go and see it because it is Girish Kannad, right? So in that sense, you must have a star value to it. And I think that's where savvy marketing also comes in is that, uh, you, you know, it's either the, uh, which is very good that in this case, it's the playwright. Uh, in Bombay, it's uh, usually the uh, the actor. lead actor, yeah. you know, that uh, who has a television or a film following. Uh, so you you know, if Nasiruddin Shah does a play, uh, it will be full. In gibberish. Even in, if he could, if he reads from the phone book as well, people will pay to, to come there because they, they they get to see their star on stage. But, but just to add to that, you know, some years ago we brought a we brought a production from Sweden called Cassandra Now. And when I saw it in Edinburgh, I was fascinated and we invited it out and everybody said, you're mad because it was in Swedish. And, uh, but it transcended language because it was such a magnificently produced visual delight. It didn't matter whether, you know, they were barking or, or, or singing in a strange light. It just worked brilliantly and nobody understood the word. You knew the, you knew the story because Cassandra now is, you know, is a well-known story, but you didn't necessarily do that. Other lady in the, yeah, go ahead. Hello, my question is for Manu, sir. Sir, like you said, most of the Indians are well acquainted with English nowadays. Just, just hold it closer to your... So, like you said, most of the Indians are well acquainted with English nowadays. And probably that is the reason why the regional writers are hiring English translators so that their work gains momentum. So, why did you choose to translate the play into a regional language? What's the I am not able to get out. That most, uh, I think if I've understood it correctly, because even I didn't hear, uh, it is that most people, most regional writers aspire to have their plays translated into English. But why did you choose a play? Why did you choose? Yeah, I have already questioned uh, uh, that uh, when, I have already given the reply to that, uh, in the beginning that, uh, why I choose April to translate uh, any play or a short story or novel? In that, uh, uh, when I started reading Mahesh, I loved that uh, piece. Then I started reading him and uh, I had a, developed a likingness uh, towards Mahesh's writings. That is the basic uh, thing. Second thing is, uh, it is, uh, you see, uh, I will tell you one thing, I will not decode the name. I have recently read uh, one play in Odia, which has been uh, given award this time by Site Academy. I know that he is a very serious writer, but unfortunately when I thought to translate into English, when I read that uh, play, I told, sorry sir, I am not uh, happy with the play, because it, uh, I have uh, read his good plays. I decided, I just denied uh, that I can't, uh, I am not enjoying reading that uh, uh, play. So the first thing is, uh, uh, as I have already told that the language will come automatically, but there will be the second place. First, you have to see whether it is overall Indian. We have a different languages. Okay, I, I wish that uh, uh, Mahesh, uh, this Dance Like a Man or other plays to be translated to the, all the uh, 22 official languages in India so that people can know that what is the real Mahesh is. Instead of staying in the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, dry room, uh, he should go out, people should play it uh, the, the, and uh, read it also. So uh, my point is that uh, uh, that is the region only I, a good uh, book always to, uh, needs to be translated so that people uh, can be benefited. Um, hi. Um, in Gurgaon, we now have this place called Kingdom of Dreams, which runs two musicals that have never actually been done on that kind of a scale before in India. But I know most theatre enthusiasts actually frown down upon those musicals. So what is your opinion on the effect, long-term effect, if any, that those musicals will have on the theatre scene in India? 
You see, there's space for everything to happen. And I think it's great that Kingdom of Dreams attracts such a large audience, and especially a paying audience. I believe the tickets are 5,000 rupees or something like that. So which means they're really doing something right. If people feel it's worth spending 5,000 rupees to see something. For those who don't know, Kingdom of Dreams is something in Gurgaon where, which does spectacular uh, shows. Their shows more than plays. Uh, they use music, they use trapeze artists, they use singing, live singing, acrobatics, and it's wonderful. I haven't seen it, but I know people who, who continue to praise it. And visually, it's, it's so spectacular. If, you know, if I had the resources, I, I would uh, actually want to do something like that. And why do some people frown upon it? Maybe because it's, uh, it, I don't know what uh, the intent is, whether they want to create a new language of theater and sort of uh, uh, get musical theater out there, or is it just a short-term benefit of uh, uh, quick profits, in, uh, which is also fine. I mean, doing, if, if you can earn money, uh, that's a good enough reason to do it. Uh, but I, I personally am all for it, uh, that there's room for uh, a theater that's done on a, on a table and two, with, uh, with a table and two chairs for 20 people, and there's room for the kind of theater that Kingdom of Dreams does. I have a question. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do one or two last questions. Uh, I have a question, Satsuki. Yes, yeah, well, you've already asked one. So the lady with the scarf, yeah, and then the lady with the jacket, and then we'll take your last question. Okay. Hello, sir. I'm a huge fan. But this is just to add to whatever my friend said here regarding star part adding to a play. So doesn't that in a way reinforce the claim that theater art is dying when it comes to young artists who genuinely would like to showcase their talent, their writing skills, their acting skills, directorial skills, but they just don't have an audience because, well, there's not a star part attached to it. There's no Nasiruddin Shah or Ganesh Karnat attached to the name of the play, but these people are fabulous artists. So what do you say about that? Okay, and the, and the next one? Good afternoon, sir. What, as an uh, actor and a director, what is the freedom you get in theater that you don't get in cinema? Oh, okay. Okay, so two Good questions. Question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, the first one, I would say that we have to come to terms with the fact that we live in an unfair world. The world does not owe us uh, uh, any kind of artistic or social justice. You may be a brilliant actor, but if you're not a star, you're not going to get paid as much and you're probably not going to be noticed as much. Uh, you know, it's very much like the character Nazia in my play, that she comes to terms with a lot of things, and she knows how to manipulate, she knows how to take advantage, she's looking for opportunities at every moment to market. To, uh, to market, to sell her production, whatever, and that's the reality. And I, I think we should look at these limitations as a challenge because great creative works have taken place because of these very challenges. If you look at Iranian cinema, I mean, they work with such great constraints. Here in Bollywood, we ought to be ashamed that you have, you know, 100 crores to make rubbish, and there you, you know, you not only do you have not have money, you don't have actors, uh, you don't have women who, who can act because uh, they're all afraid to come, uh, uh, you know, out in the open, and yet some of those films are better than anything you, you would see. So I think embrace the, uh, the limitations, embrace the uh, injustice of it, embrace the unfairness of life, and uh, you can then uh, actually achieve. And, and remember, young people are always also given an opportunity, and if you shine in that opportunity, you do get picked up and, and, and you do get uh, uh, many roles or many opportunities. But a lot of people think that being an artist, meaning society owes them, society owes nobody. Really, I mean, artists have this feeling that, you know, everybody else, else has to do something for you. You choose a lifestyle. When you choose to be an artist, it's a lifestyle choice you're making. So you have to be very clear okay. about that and live with it. And your question. No, and you had uh, the... Uh, oh, there was another question. I, I forgot. What was your question? It was about what's the difference between cinema and... Oh, no. Uh, I what are the constraints? Creative freedom. Okay. Well, I think uh, I may be uh, generalizing, but theater to me is a writer's and actor's medium, and cinema is a director's medium. That in the theater, 
the rhythm, the pace, the energy, the flow uh, of what, what you see, uh, the, uh, the music uh, of uh, how it plays out spatially and temporally is all controlled by the actors and the audience. The actors feed from the audience because it's live, right? Whereas cinema is an art form which requires a great deal of contrivance, uh, that everything is actually in little bits and pieces, and it's the art of putting it all together to tell a story, right? So which means that the director and his vision or her vision is primarily uh, of importance. So which is more creative? depends on the person and what, you, what you're looking at. But I, th I think if I want to work in film, I would choose direction rather than writing. I'm going to ask you to hold your question. Okay, okay, ask okay. Ask okay. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll ask Thank you, you all very much. Uh, Mahesh Tatadi, Manudash, we'll both be happy to go and sign books for you all. Thank you all very much.